Okay, here we go with um, appropriately Paul Paris on um, on April Fool's Day, my favorite holiday of the year. Um, uh, take it away, Paul. Losing trick count. I'm so excited. Me too. This is a, a really valuable tool for you. And um, if you want to look at this in greater depth, there was a series of articles in the uh, ACBL Bulletin in 2012 and um, in 18. Do you know how to access those uh, those old bulletins through the ACBL? Um, you can go to my ACBL and sign up there on the website, and then um, you'll be able to see all the old issues. So. Uh, well worth looking into these to uh, getting greater depth. We're going to go through a, a real simple version of uh, losing trick count. As with anything, uh, this can get very, very complicated. And when you decide to play in the world championships, you may want to um, <laughs> review that in greater detail. But this, for us grunts at the club level, this is plenty good. Okay, so what it is, is it's just another way of evaluating hands, just like distribution points. I don't know if you know about the law of total tricks yet, but that's another um, uh, hand evaluation method. And um, we also add losing trick count. The important thing to know is you can only use the losing trick count when you have found a fit with partner. And it's important to know that an eight card fit isn't eight in your hand and a void in partner's hand. Partner should have at least three cards in the suit uh, to consider it a, a trump fit for purposes of the losing trick count. So how does it work? You count the losers in your hand. You count partner's losers. Now you don't know how many losers partner has because you're not peeking at his hand, hopefully but uh, we'll talk about how you can estimate how many losers partners has. You subtract that from 24, and that tells you how many tricks you can expect to take. So if you have seven losers and you think partner has seven losers, that's 14. You subtract it from 24, and your expected number of tricks that you can take is, uh, is 10. It's a pretty easy formula. So let's figure out what a loser is. You can have no more than three losers in a suit. And you subtract a loser for every ace, king, or queen in any suit that's uh, three cards or longer. So with three small, you have three losers. Same thing with four small, because you can never have more than three. And anything up to the jack would also be three. If you have the ace, the king, or the queen, you can subtract a loser, so you only have two. If you have two of the honors, you only have one loser in that suit. And of course, if you have the ace, king, queen, you have zero losers in the suit. It works the same way for a doubleton, except you just count the ace or queen. So queen doubleton or smaller is two losers. If you have the ace or the king, it's down to one. And if you have the ace, king, zero. Uh, not surprisingly, it holds true for one, two, one also. Uh, if you have the ace, you don't have any losers. Anything else uh, is a one loser suit. And you look at each of the suits separately. Obviously, a void is zero losers. So here's some common auctions. And we, you know, they happen all the time. One heart, some number of hearts by partner. Um, you can now employ losing trick counts. Same thing if uh, you open a minor, partner bids a heart, and you're going to bid uh, some number of hearts. Um, that would be based again on a losing trick count, or it can be based on losing trick count. So you know how many losers you have, but you don't know what that means. And um, this is an attempt to just kind of convert um, the number of losers into something we're familiar with, which is high card points. So if opener has eight or more losers, he's not an opener because he shouldn't be opening a hand. Uh, usually. Uh, seven losers is considered a minimum opening bid. Uh, six losers is a, a bit better. It's in that medium range where you would invite game. Uh, one, one diamond, one heart, three hearts, or you would accept an invitation by responder. Uh, five losers is uh, you would 
bit of game after a response by partner, one heart, two hearts, um, four hearts. And four losers, typically you're going to open two clubs or you're going to jump shift um, after, uh, after opening. Now, obviously, I open a heart. You don't know how many losers I have. I could have seven, six, five, four, or fewer. But um, you know I have at least, um, or at most, seven. Because with eight, I'm likely to have passed. So you have to hear more bidding from me in order to determine exactly how many losers I have. Same thing for a responder. Typically, with 10 losers, you're not going to be um, responding at all. You're going to pass because you have uh, insufficient values. Uh, one heart, two hearts. The two heart bid shows at most uh, nine losers. With eight losers, you make a limit raise. With seven losers, remember we counted seven losers by opener, seven losers by partner. Um, seven losers by you, that's, you're going to get 10 tricks, that's values for game. And all of these, I'm assuming you're, it's a major suit fit rather than a um, minor suit that you would need an extra trick or an extra one fewer losers in order to uh, be making something in five of a minor. If partner opens and you have six losers, slam is possible. With five losers, slam is likely. With, uh, if you have four losers and partner opens, um, good luck with that, uh, but you should be looking at the grand slam. Those don't happen very often. So let's take a look at a couple of hands. Uh, you may re recognize the person I played this hand against. Um, and this was last week. Oh boy. Um, North opened uh, my partner, or in this case, victim, opened a, a club, like they said. Uh, the, uh, my right-hand opponent, opponent, whoever it is, um, bit a diamond. I bit a heart. We have uh, two diamond rays and uh, two hearts by partner. Now, if you count partners, and if you look at the hand, what do we have? 11, 14 points. It doesn't sound like it's a a great hand, a singleton diamond should be worth something. And maybe she should have been three. But if she plays me for seven losers, or he, I don't want to give away anything here. <laughs> there's only five losers. And seven plus five is, um, is twelve. 12, or seven plus nine, excuse me. Uh, I'm, I'm just showing a nine loser hand here. So if that's 14, she should be able to figure it out that we have uh, 10 tricks and could have been game. Um, and in fact, um, if you look over here, we did make game and it, uh, it was even Paul proof. I, you know, it wasn't even hard for me to do it. Um, made five because the club finesse worked. So it's a good example of how you don't need all the points if they're in the right places and if you count the right losers. Here's another one. Uh, this time we did get to the the right spot. Um, I opened a heart. We had a Michaels bid over here, two hearts. Gives away a lot of information for the the opponents, so uh, that helped us. Uh, partner bid three hearts. Now that should be, um, you know, a, a decent raise. So um, I'm figuring eight or nine losers to bid three hearts, and. Um, Looking at only five myself, once again, uh, we could bid game. It isn't obvious that this hand makes four because we have two clubs to lose. We have a diamond to lose, and it looks like there's a spade loser also um, the fourth round because I have to pull Trump in three rounds, and I have no place to park this last spade. But the Michaels bid certainly helped me out here. Um, I was able to figure it out. In fact, this is kind of an interesting hand. If we look at it, um, the Michaels bidder started out with a top diamond. So I have a pretty good idea where the ace and the king are. And I also know that she's 5'5 five, five in those two suits now. Switch to a club, which wins. A second club which wins. So they've taken their three tricks. I got. I need the rest. 
And now the 10 of spades. Um, since I can count seven, and I know that there's five over here, that's 12. I know that the 10 is singleton. So there's an easy way to make this hand now by pulling Trump and then just finessing the nine, picking up the jack and I can pick up the whole suit. But I figured that was way too easy. So I wanted to do a more elegant little way of doing it. This is just fun, I'm showing off here. I pulled Trump. Now I continued to play hearts and Wes can pitch a diamond and on the next one, Wes can pitch another diamond. But now when I lead the last one, if the eight of diamond or the eight, if he pitches the ace of diamonds, my queen is going to be good. So he has to pitch a spade. Now you see I can take the last three tricks in spades. So that's what's called a squeeze. And um, you don't get to do them very often. And it was a lot of fun for me doing that to the opponents. Uh, I, have I have a question about your your processing because right now I can see nine losers and five losers, but I'm wondering the sequence, who's deciding what? Well, both are, it depends who's giving the information, okay? So if it goes one heart, two hearts, three hearts, uh, the three heart bidder is saying I have uh, a six loser hand. I'm inviting game. I'm better than a seven loser hand because I would just pass with seven. I have seven losers. Partner by bidding only two hearts is shown nine. That's 16. We subtract it from 24. So we only have um, eight tricks. Um, on the other hand, if I open a heart and partner bids three hearts, that's showing an eight loser hand, they're inviting. So uh, now I know exactly as the one heart bidder, I know exactly how many losers partner has and I can make the determination. So it's the, just like uh, using high card points, it's the hand that limits themselves, which uh, provides the information to partner to make the decision. Now, what I'd like to do is in my next presentation is go, if you want to do this, is go through um, a lot of examples of these to show how the bidding would work um, using losing trick count, or I can move on to something else. So you decide ahead of time that you're going to use losing trick count instead of your points? Well, like I say, it's a, it's a valuation hand. I, if I have eight losers and 13 points, I'm gonna open anyway, because I know everybody else in the room is going to be opening, but it may be a way to uh, tilt your decision as to whether or not to uh, bid that extra level or not. I would not rely totally on this, but it works surprisingly well. So uh, it, it should be an important tool. I think along with counting high card points, you should also be counting your losers. I, I agree with that summary in particular. And, and yes, Paul, we would love, um, it, yeah, you would want to do it and if you could do it in examples from both opener and responder. So like this hand, the opener had the, the one less loser, we'll call it, or, you know, than they, or two of them might not have been expected. So, right. yeah, right. so the that- and The three heart bidder had told me I have had. nine losers or, you know, maybe, maybe eight. Right, but they could have done two spades, for example, to be a little stronger or something, right? So they kind of knew where, their strength was, they kind of knew what they had. I, right. I, I wholeheartedly agree, use it as a tool. Don't ever use it across the board 100% of the time. I, and actually I've kind of had the same philosophy about um, uh, the, what's the law of total tricks? It, it's, yeah. they're, they're to be used as tools. And I, I think, cause here's where it kind of, it was particularly popular the last few years or whatever, but, um, a lot of times people will be like, well, there was no way to bid game. There's no way to bid slam. This is usually the tool that you can use to help you find that. So I, I, I encourage you to use it. Uh, thanks a lot, Paul. And we uh, look forward to uh, your return. And uh, if you uh, will, uh, we'll sign off for now. Thanks everybody. And we'll Thank you, Paul. Uh, get over Thank to the you. game.
Thanks. Any questions, you, uh, you know, feel free to email me if you have any questions about any of this. 